Get ready for a mind-blowing experience with John Stuart Reed. He's not just any expert. Reed is one of the rare few who've actually studied the acoustics of the Great Pyramid. Back in 1997, he did something incredible in the King's Chamber of the Pyramid, experiments that led him to invent the Cymoscope. This cool gadget turns sound into something you can see. Today, through this presentation, Reed is going to reveal the real shape of sound. And trust me, it's not just about cool visuals, it's about understanding sound in a way that can genuinely enhance your life. He's going to show us how sound can power up our prayers, affirmations, and every word that leaves our lips. And the best part? This stuff actually works. So, sit tight and get ready for a journey through the world of sound with John Stuart Reed's presentation. We're about to see and hear sound like never before. What is the shape of sound? This is going to surprise you that those of you who don't know what the shape of sound is, most of you probably think that sound is a wave and it leaves somebody's mouth, say, or it leaves a loudspeaker and it goes wiggly, wiggly, wiggly through the air. Well, I have to disappoint you if you think that is the case. Sound does not do that. Sound is actually spherical. So every sound that you've ever heard from the moment of your birth has been spherical. Now here's a nice diagram to demonstrate this, but before we get to the diagram, let me just talk you through the thing. We have vocal folds, little flap of skin that vibrates up and down. What happens in the throat when that little flap of skin vibrates up and down because of the passage of air coming up from our lungs is that a little pearl of sound is created. And here it is, that little pearl. It's a tiny little pearl, spherical pearl of sound rapidly expands up our throats, through our mouths, some of it goes up through our nasal cavities. Two bubbles are formed, one in front of our lips, and one comes down the, the nasal cavity and joins the main passage of sound out through the mouth. And in a split second, we have this beautiful bubble of sonic energy standing in front of our lips. Of course, it doesn't stand, it actually is moving very fast, but if you can just visualize it statically for a moment. So here it is, here's the little bubble coming out of the mouth. And on the surface of that bubble is a beautiful pattern. And that is the pattern that represents all the structure in your beautiful voice. Imagine stepping into a world where everything you thought you knew about sound is turned on its head. That's exactly what John Stuart Reed's eye-opening presentation does. Forget the old idea that sound moves in waves. Reed introduces us to a game changer. Sound actually spreads out like a sphere all around. It's a bit like watching a stone hit a pond and seeing those ripples spread in every direction. This isn't just some wild theory, it has real world effects, changing how we understand sound in our daily lives. Think about it, when someone talks, their voice isn't just going straight to the person in front of them, it's filling the whole room, reaching every corner. This idea takes us on a wild ride through different spaces, from concert halls to your own living room, and shows us how sound works in these places in a whole new light. But that's just the beginning. Reed's spherical sound concept opens doors to even more thrilling ideas. We'll dive into the secrets of how our voice resonates, the mystical links between sound and ancient texts, and the big impact sound has on our minds and reality. By looking at sound as a sphere, we're not just talking about a scientific concept. We're exploring a whole new way to understand the sounds of our universe. This journey into the nature of sound isn't just fascinating. It's a chance to hear the world around us like never before. Anyway, moving on, we've done this little graphic to show that sound is, as I said, not a wave, but in fact a bubble. And all this is, is taking a slice through the sonic bubble here, and you'll see these rings. Well, what they are representing are the areas of high compression and low compression within the sonic bubble. So right in the center is meant to be the event, as it were, the, whatever the event is. It could be my voice, it could be a hand clap, it could be anything. But that's the event right in the center. And then it expands outward in this spherical way, creating areas of high pressure and low pressure. So these are areas where the molecules are all kind of bunched up together and areas where they're slack, they're not bunched up, they're less compressed, let's say. Now what's this wiggle in the middle? Well, the wiggle in the middle is basically the sine wave. This is what physicists and scientists talk about when they're talking about sinusoidal energy or they're talking about the sound wave. 
or they might even be talking about an electromagnetic wave. They still use the same terminology, it's a wave. Well, it isn't a wave. <laughs> what it is, this is a graph. It's a graph of the energy, of the law of the energy. So if you follow that law, as it were, it's a mathematical law. The way that sound propagates is to what is called a sinusoidal law. Now, you don't need to get, if you're not mathematicians, or you were never very good at math, you don't need to worry about it. The main thing to remember about this sinusoidal law is that energy can never go from point A to point B instantaneously. It's impossible. To do that, you'd have to exceed the speed of light, and you can't do that. Well, I don't believe you can. The point is that anything, take a pendulum swinging backwards and forwards, it can't go from this extreme to this extreme instantaneously. It takes time. And as it goes backwards and forwards, so it builds up its velocity, comes to a halt, reverses direction, and goes back the other way. This is a periodic motion, backwards and forwards. And that's what sound does. So as this sound sphere is expanding, it is not only expanding, but the outside of it is kind of trembling. It has a tremor. And it's the tremor which is the sound. And that is what that graph is all about. It's actually showing us that the law of the energy looks like a wave. Digging deeper into the world of spherical sound, we come across something truly mesmerizing. The way our own voices, especially when we say vowels, create these incredible energy patterns called toroidal fields. Think of the saying from the Bible, death and life are in the power of the tongue, Proverbs 18, 21. We're going to explore just how true this is, blending science with a touch of spirituality. Every time you speak a vowel, it's not just a sound. It creates a unique energy pattern, kind of like a donut shape. This isn't just poetic language, it's real. With cymatics, the science of seeing sound, we can actually see these patterns in things like water or sand. Each vowel makes its own special shape and frequency. Take the vowel A, as in father. When you say it, it makes a big, open, toroidal field. You can almost feel the energy of openness. Then there's E, as in C, with a tighter, more focused energy pattern. And it's not just A and E. Every vowel has its own frequency and shape, each with its own vibe. But these energy shapes do more than just float around. They interact with the energy around us. It's like our words are little magnets attracting energies that match what we're saying. So when we speak, especially with real intent, we're not just talking, we're creating something. This ties back to the idea that our words can bring life or the opposite. When we speak, we're sending out energy that really does interact with the world. Say something positive with belief, and you create an energy field of growth and positivity. On the flip side, negative words can attract bad vibes, affecting our lives and surroundings. Understanding these energy fields shows us just how powerful our voices are. Cymatics teaches us that sound can shape matter. So, our words might actually be shaping our reality. Each vowel, with its unique sound and energy pattern, could be aligning with what we desire and intend. Knowing about these toroidal fields makes us think twice about what we say. Our voices aren't just for talking, they're like magic wands, shaping our reality. Let's dive even deeper into this intriguing crossroads where science and spirituality meet. Here, we find something remarkable. The way sound physics connects with ancient scriptures, and how things like affirmations and prayer might actually change the world around us. This isn't just about understanding sound better. It's about uncovering a truth that's as old as time. Our words have the power to shape reality. Throughout history, in stories and sacred texts, sound has always been a big deal. The Bible starts with, In the beginning was the word painting a picture of a universe sung into existence. This idea isn't just in Christianity. In Hinduism, it's the Om that kickstarts creation. And in Norse mythology, Odin's voice breaks the silence to shape the world. These stories from all over the globe share a common thread. Sound is a fundamental creative force. Modern science is starting to catch up with this ancient wisdom. Cymatics, where we can see sound, shows how different sounds can organize particles into complex patterns. Even quantum physics hints that our intentions, observed through sound, might just influence reality itself. Now, 
consider affirmations and prayer. These aren't just feel-good spiritual practices. They could be physically affecting the world around us. See an affirmation or a prayer, and you're not just thinking positive thoughts, you're creating sound waves that might just resonate with the energies around you. Take, for example, a study on the Buddhist mantra, Om Mani Padme Hum. The continuous chanting of this mantra was found to change water crystals, making them more harmonious. This echoes Dr. Masaru Emoto's findings and suggests that our spiritual chants could physically change water, which, remember, is a big part of us humans. The sound of affirmations and prayers often matches the frequencies of our brainwaves, like the theta waves in deep meditation. These sounds can help our brains reach states of relaxation and clarity. It's not just an individual thing either. When groups of people come together for prayer or chanting, they create a powerful resonance field that might even affect the larger environment. The Global Consciousness Project has data hinting that when lots of people focus their intentions during big events, it correlates with changes in random number generators. It's as if our collective consciousness can interact with physical reality. So, what does this all mean? It's a big deal. Our words and sounds are more than just ways to communicate. They're active forces capable of influencing the world. Every word we say, every sound we make, is like a wave in the universe, touching the physical and energetic world. This isn't just about the spiritual side of sound. It's a reminder to be mindful of how we speak and use our voices. It's an invitation to recognize the power of our words, whether in prayer, affirmation, or even casual chat. By understanding the power of sound, we connect with an ancient wisdom that saw spoken words as a tool for creation and transformation. Now, let's talk about harmonics. These are special kinds of sound frequencies that do more than just make noise. They touch something deep within us. Think of them as vibrations that don't just ring in our ears, but resonate through our entire body. And this isn't just a feeling. Science backs it up. Studies show that certain types of music, like tunes played at 432 hertz, can actually make us feel calmer and happier than other music. It's like our bodies are fine-tuned to these frequencies. But here's where it gets really interesting. The power of spoken words. Words are not just a bunch of letters strung together. They carry energy, a vibrational force that can influence the physical and emotional world around us. This idea might sound a bit out there, but there's science to back it up too. Take Dr. Masaru Emoto's work, for example. He found that positive words can change the structure of water crystals. Since our bodies are mostly water, imagine what our words can do to us. This concept isn't just about the words we speak out loud, it's about the intentions behind them. It's like when you use positive affirmations. You're not just saying nice things, you're programming your brain to believe them. This is where the mind-bending science of neuro-linguistic programming, NLP, comes in. It tells us that by changing our words, we can change our thoughts and even our reality. And if you need more proof, look at the placebo effect, one of the coolest tricks our minds can play. People, given a sugar pill, thinking it's real medicine, can actually get better. It's all about the power of belief. What we think and believe, especially when we put those beliefs into words, can have real physical effects. So, what's the big takeaway from this fascinating journey? Every word we say is like casting a spell. With each word, we're sending out vibes into the universe. Vibes that have the power to turn our thoughts and intentions into reality. It's a reminder to choose our words carefully because they're more powerful than we often realize. Ever noticed how saying something positive to someone can totally change their mood? That's the real magic of words at work. It's not just about making someone smile, it's about transforming their entire state of being. And guess what? You can do the same for yourself. Considering we're about 70% water, those positive vibrations you speak aren't just feel-good sounds, they're altering your physiology. They can make you healthier, more radiant, and elevate your vibration. Understand this, every word you utter, every time you open your mouth, you're wielding a power that can transform your life and the lives of those around you. You're not just talking, you're vibrating, resonating. With each positive word, you're not just communicating, 
you're creating a ripple of change, both within and around you. So, what's the big realization here? It's that your words aren't just words. They're a powerful force, a vibration that can resonate through the universe and make things happen. Every time you speak, you're not just communicating, you're creating. As we wrap up this journey, remember the immense power you hold. Your voice can be a tool for health, beauty, and positive change. Every word is a chance to lift yourself and others higher. Speak with intention, live with purpose, and watch the world around you respond to your vibrant energy.